Hi everyone, in last session we have discussed about the special concretes and its types. In this session we are going to discuss about non-restrictive testing techniques and its uh, brief note. Along with this we are going to discuss about various non-restrictive testing techniques like uh, rebound hammer test, ultrasonic pulse velocity test, radiography, electromagnetic cover measurement. Concrete testing is of two types, non-destructive testing and destructive testing. In non-destructive testing, the specimen is not destroyed and it is used for intended purpose further. So in destructive testing, the specimen is uh, destroyed or uh, failure takes place and uh, the specimen is not used for further intended purpose. Why we are using non-destructive testing technique is, it is used for assessment of the structure in the absence of drawing and it is used for quick assessment of the structure. It is used for quality control of construction in situ. It is used for determining the position of uh, reinforcement and for locating cracks, joints, delamination, honeycombs, etc. In some cases it is also used for assessment of the damage due to fire or other natural calamities. In non-destructive testing technique, the strength evaluation of the concrete is carried out in the following table. So it is measured the measurement application and the equipment used is briefly tabulated. The strength evaluation of concrete in non-destructive testing technique is uh, briefly tabulated in which it consists of measurement application and equipments used. So next we are going to see a brief note on NDT test in which the strength evaluation of concrete is carried out in three categories which is measurement application and equipment which is briefly tabulated and the second category of NDT is corrosion assessment location and diameter of the rebar which is also briefly tabulated. The NDT test is classified based on strength evaluation of concrete and also it is classified based on the corrosion assessment, location of the rebar and diameter of the rebar which is separately tabulated in two tabular columns which consists of measurement application and equipment. The non-restrictive testing techniques is classified into three major classifications. The first is strength evaluation of the concrete which is tabulated in this slide as measurement, application and equipment. The second major classification is corrosion assessment, location of the rebar and the diameter of the rebar which is also classified based on measurement, application and equipment. The third major classification of NDT test is crack measurement in buildings which is also tabulated in this slide as measurement, application and equipment. So the first type of non-destructive testing technique is rebound hammer test. So the objective of the rebound hammer test is to find the compressive strength of the concrete with the help of uh, rebound index and compressive strength. It is used for assessing the uniformity of the concrete. It is used for the assessing the quality of concrete in relation to standard equipment. The first classification of non-destructive testing is rebound hammer test. The objective of rebound hammer test is to find the compressive strength of the concrete with the help of suitable correlation between rebound index and compressive strength. It is used for assessing the uniformity of the concrete. It is used for assessing the quality of the concrete in relation to standard requirement. The principle behind rebound hammer test is it works on the rebound of an elastic mass depends upon the hardness of the surface against which the mass impinges. Next we are going to see about the procedure for rebound hammer test so in which the hammer is ready for test in the first figure. In the second one the hammer is pushed against the object in the third the hammer is released and in the fourth figure the hammer rebounds. So next we are going to see about the interpretation of the test results for rebound hammer test. So in which the average rebound number specifies the quality of the concrete. If the average rebound number is more than 40 it is very good hard layer. If it is between 30 to 40 it is good and if it is 20 to 30 it is fair and if it is less than 20 it is poor. So the next type of non-destructive testing is ultrasonic pulse velocity test. So the objective of ultrasonic pulse velocity test is to determine the homogeneity of the concrete, to find the presence of cracks, voids and other imperfections in concrete, to find the changes in the structure due to the course of time and to determine the quality of the concrete in relation to the standard requirements and to find the values of uh, elastic modulus in concrete. The principle behind ultrasonic pulse velocity test is uh, the velocity of the Ultrasonic pulse passes through any material depends upon the density of the material and modulus of elasticity of the material. The apparatus for ultrasonic pulse velocity testing is shown in the slide. Next we are going to see how ultrasonic pulse velocity test works. So ultrasonic waves are similar to the light waves that gets reflected, refracted and focused. So reflection and refraction occurs when the sound waves interact with the interfaces of different acoustic properties. So ultrasonic reflections from the presence of discontinuous or geometric features enables direction of the defects and its locations. 
A pulse of longitudinal vibration is produced by electroacoustical transducer which is held in the surface of the concrete under test and after transversing to a known length, the pulse of the vibration is converted into electrical signal by another acoustical transducer and the electronic timing circuit enables them to capture the transit time of the pulse and this is how the pulse velocity is measured. A schematic diagram for transducer arrangement is shown in the slide. The interpretation of test result for ultrasonic pulse velocity test depends upon the pulse velocity which determines the concrete quality. If the pulse velocity is above 4.5 it is excellent and if it is 3.5 to 4.5 the concrete quality is good and if it is 3 to 3.5 the quality is medium and if it is below 3 it is doubtful. Next type of NDT testing is electromagnetic cover measurement. The basic principle is that the presence of steel affects the field of electromagnet. So it is used to measure the cover concrete and uh, the bar diameter of the existing RC structure. It can also use to identify the location of the rebar and their spacing. Next I had given a practical example for electromagnetic cover measurement in which the scanning direction should be perpendicular to the rebars. So next type of uh, non-destructive testing technique is half cell electrical potential so which is used to detect the corrosion in the reinforcement of the structure the inside to corrosion potential is absorbed and the electric charges that passes through the reinforcement is also absorbed and the corrosion activity is thus determined so here with i have shown an apparatus for a half cell potential measurement in which it consists of a voltmeter and a copper sulfate half cell which is used to determine the potential that passes through the concrete. So here with I had given two different images. The first image specifies there is no corrosion in rebus and hence the potential difference does not occur. So in the second image the potential difference occurs because there is corrosion in the rebus. The interpretation of test result for half cell potential depends upon the potential that flows in the concrete. So it depends upon the corrosion condition. So if it is 0 to minus 200 the corrosion is low and if it is minus 200 to minus 350 it is intermediate and if it is less than minus 350 it is high corrosion and if it is less than minus 500 it is severe corrosion. Next type of non-destructive testing technique is radiography. When radioactive rays are directed towards the object some of the photons interact with the particles of the matter and their energy is either absorbed or scattered. This absorption and scattering is called as attenuation and the relationship between the intensity of the photon inter received and transmitted is given by the formula I is equal to I naught into E power minus mu x. The effect of attenuation is used to determine the defects in the concrete. As the radiation passes through the member, the intensity is reduced according to the thickness, density and the characteristics of the material. The quantity of the radiation passed through the member is recorded in a film. Here with I had given a setup for a radiography which consists of a source that produces a radioactive beam that passes through the concrete that consists of a steel reinforcement and it is absorbed in a detector. So next we are going to see how to determine the cracks. The cracks and voids on the other hand absorbs less radiation and shows up a dark zone on the film. Cracks parallel to the radiation direction is more readily absorbed than the cracks perpendicular to the radiation direction. Based on the absorption of the radiation, the cracks are determined on the following basis. Cracks and voids on the other hand absorbs less radiation and shows up a dark zone on the film. Cracks parallel to the radiation direction is more readily absorbed than the cracks perpendicular to the radiation direction. Now we have came to the end of the session. I hope you all understand about the non-destructive testing techniques and its types like rebound hammer test, ultrasonic pulse velocity test, electromagnetic cover measurement, half cell potential test and radiography. In our upcoming lecture series, we are going to see about epoxy injection repair technique. Thank you.